Howdy, Dennis here. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll notice that uh, our historical coordinator is Barry Gill Alberg. And Gill is a very good friend of mine, and like myself, he has a, a true passion for digging up history. And I mean that literally. He has a ma an amazing collection, which he's shared with me, of historical relics and artifacts that he's uh, found with his metal detector over the past 14 or 15 years. Well, this video is about a store ran by the Albergs in Pennsylvania. These are ancestors of Gill's. I thought I would surprise him with this video and I dedicate it to my good friend Gill, whose help in researching the past has been invaluable to me. The accompanying article and drawing was done by Dorothy Hook. Albergs Grocery, a soft white faded into memory gray clapboard building sitting square on one side of a 3T road. Coming down the Westville Road from 219 on a hazy below zero January day, the road several inches of solid lumpy ice layered by ground and snow, the sky a drifting clouded gray with a transparent yellow sun trying to warm through. The brightest spot in the landscape, a blazing yellow sign bespeaking Alberg's Grocery, Pepsi, the taste that beats the others cold, and the yellow of the sign making up for the radiance that the sun lacked. A boardwalk from the doorstep of the store reached across where the road now now goes. This was used in the early 1900s when the train stopped at the Westville loading dock and unloaded boxes and crates of fresh produce, stacks of groceries and hard goods. Once inside Alberg's, you felt you had stepped back into the warmth of the checker era. The center spot still remains a potbelly stove warming the customers as well as their memories. A huge round black stove invites you to sit for a while. Checkers have been replaced by Trouble Hubble, enjoyed by uh, two little tykes under five years of age, and Mr. H.E. Swanson, who, with his good memory for such days as when the store originally in the KFP building, warmed the dancers' uh, feet on a cold Saturday night. Now, Nearly 50 years later, it occasionally touches a jacket only to leave its melted imprint on the fabrics of today's era. Tom Cravens built the store, uh, post office, and home upstairs on April 10, 1892. Alex McKay, a blacksmith from Nova Scotia, became postmaster storekeeper for the Jefferson Coal Company, a company store that kept everyone in and on the books with money in hand. The town then was named Cravens. From 1896, when Albert Weiser took over, to 1935, when John Alberg was the owner, the store had seen Albert Weiser, 1896, Harry Taylor, 1912, John Taylor, 1918, Charlie Calhoun, 1920, and Gustav Vestor, 1921, turning the key in the morning or peeking through the peephole to, on the stairs to see who was at the early morning door. Each ran the store lived upstairs and was postmaster using the existing post office equipment over the past 83 years, perhaps making the, uh, the still ex in existence desk, mailbox, uh, cases, scales, etc., the oldest antique equipment in postal use in all of Pennsylvania. The unique post office now serves 20 area families and is in the process of possibly being phased out depending on a U.S. postal decision, says Susan Preston of Cole Glenn, presently clerk in charge. Looking about, one sees on a, a top shelf two old-time capped uh, bottles of Francis Alberg, the present postmaster and retired postmaster uh, from 30 years service, remembers as holding some brew as well as root beer. And then he showed me the huge hook on the window that held bananas by the bunch, ripening in the warm sun streaming through the um, nearly 100-year-old window panes. In the winter of 1924, the hook held a heavier bundle, a huge black bear killed by Ruby Emanuelson. The old timers and the wide-eyed kids, as well as the aproned wives, came to see and wonder about the big Bruin. In the corner stands a five-foot copper needle used to push uh, charges <clears throat> in the coal mines. I asked if it was ever used to prod someone out the door. Not ever, explained Francis. As you can imagine, Alberg's has been a delightful place to stop, visit, and perhaps uh, buy some postage stamps. 
play the pinball machine, and pick up groceries over the past 83 years. And uh, there are so many stores uh, uh, told about in America, uh, mom and pop grocery stores that um, that have long faded away, replaced by the Walmarts, the Myers, and so on and so forth. But there is nothing like the uh, old grocery store. In my youth, uh, growing up in Bridgeport, Michigan, in the uh, 1960s, in the early 60s, there was Garshinsky's store, which was on the corner of State Street and the Dixie Highway. And uh, that was a mom and pop store. They had just, you know, about everything you could want. They didn't have the post office, though, because the post office was only a block or two away from them at that time. Yes, the old general store, the mom and pop store. America owes a big debt of thanks to all those shopkeepers who made that era so wonderful.